Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks everyone for joining us this morning and welcome to San Francisco. What you just saw on that video was the opening of our latest store in Westlake, China. It's in Hangzhou, China. It is an incredible place and it's a gorgeous new design. The architecture is amazing with a cantilevered second floor. It's absolutely breathtaking and it's the perfect place to experience our products, open, bright, and of course with a great team, and this is the way we love to see our stores. <laughs> with wonderful customers and an amazing team, these stores are really brought to life. They are the heart and soul of our retail team. Now, we are really proud to have this fantastic new home in China. We've actually opened six stores in China in the last six weeks alone. We now have 21 stores in China, and we have a very aggressive plan to be at 40 by mid-next year. We now have 453 stores in 16 countries. These are the best place to discover and explore products and get world-class support, and that's the reason that over 120 million customers visited our stores last quarter. This is phenomenal. So that's a very brief update on retail. I am so incredibly proud of our retail team and all of the great things that they do for our customers. Now, we've got a few more reasons for you to visit those stores today. And so I'm going to hop right into that. And I'm going to start with Apple TV. Now, customers love to stream their favorite movies, their favorite TV shows, their photos, their music to the big screen. We're offering content from all of the leading content providers. And we're adding more and more each day. You've probably noticed this if you're an Apple TV user. Now, of all the great channels that we have on Apple TV, there's one in particular I'd like to talk about this morning, and that is HBO. We love HBO. Over the years, they have created groundbreaking shows that have really become a part of our culture and helped shape our culture. Shows like The Sopranos, shows like Entourage, and of course, Sex and the City. And coming next month on April 12th, it's the return of Veep. And Silicon Valley. And of course, one of our favorites, Game of Thrones. Today, we've got the CEO of HBO, Richard Plepler, joining us. He's a friend of ours, and he's got some exciting news about HBO. Richard? Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of all of us at HBO, let me return your compliment by saying that we love Apple and all the extraordinary products which have captured the imagination of many people all over the world. We are thrilled to be here this morning to announce our standalone streaming service, HBO Now, and we couldn't be prouder that Apple is our exclusive partner at launch. When you subscribe to HBO Now, you will have access to all our acclaimed original programming, past, present, and future, as well as our unmatched lineup of Hollywood blockbusters. All you need to get HBO Now is a broadband connection and an Apple device. There will be brand new HBO Now channel on Apple TV, so you can enjoy HBO on the big screen, 
and you can watch HBO on your iPhones and iPads as well. We will introduce our new product in early April for $14.99 a month. And if you subscribe in April, you will get the first month free and have it in time for the April 12th premiere of our global phenomenon, Game of Thrones. As Tim mentioned earlier, HBO is known for great content. So I thought that it would be fun for this room and for those watching to have an exclusive look at a brand new Game of Thrones trailer to give you a feel for what I promise will be an extraordinary new season. This is a transformative moment for HBO, and we are so excited to introduce HBO Now to all of you today. Thank you very much. Enjoy the trailer. Lannister, Baratheon, Stark, Tyrell, they're all just spokes on a wheel. This one's on top, then that one's on top, and on and on it spins, crushing those on the ground. I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. Stannis Baratheon is an army at Castle Black. He means to take the north. This is the time, and I will risk everything. Winter is coming. We know what's coming with it. We can learn to live with the wildlings. We can add them to the army of the dead. You are the few. We are the many. We serve the gods, and the gods demand justice. Clean this city up. So the rats have nowhere left to hide. I am a queen, not a butcher. Rather butchers don't meet. It's incredibly cool. That is the Game of Thrones and HBO Now. Richard, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and thank you for premiering your incredible service on our products. Now, Apple TV has become the category leader. We've sold over 25 million units just for, so far. And it's got a very attractive entry-level price of $99. But today, we would like to make it even more accessible for more people so they can take advantage of this great new content. So we are lowering the price today to $69. So if you, if you don't have one yet, now's the time. That's Apple TV will reinvent the way that you watch television, and this is just the beginning. Next up is iPhone. iPhone not only created a category, it created a benchmark by which all other smartphones are measured. iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus are widely considered the best smartphones in the world. Recently, we sold our 700 million iPhone. <laughs> now, iPhone is growing stronger than ever. And in fact, if you look at last quarter, we sold at a rate of double, the rate of growth of double the industry. This is phenomenal for business. This big to be growing by 50%. This led iPhone, propelled iPhone to be the top selling smartphone in the world. But we are most proud of this. 
the customer SAT score of 99% for iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. These numbers are unheard of. Now, one of the great new features that our customers love about the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus is Apple Pay. Apple Pay has forever changed the way we pay for things, and it's gotten off to the most amazing start and has enormous momentum. We started with just six banks in the US. They were the largest banks. It was a fantastic start. But now, we have over 2,500 banks supporting Apple Pay. We started with a great list of retailer partners. But now, in just three months later, we've tripled the number of locations that are accepting Apple Pay to nearly 700,000 across the US. And one of the really cool and convenient places that, uh, that has come up out of Apple Pay are vending machines. Coca-Cola now has 40,000 of these in the US and plans to have 100,000 by the end of the year. So if you're like me, you've stood in front of those machines too many times trying to uncrinkle your dollar bill and get it to be recognized, those days are over. That is Apple Pay forever changing the way we pay for things. Now, when we announced iPhone, iPhone was a revolutionary mobile phone. It was the best iPod we'd ever created. And it was the internet right in your pocket. But now, it does so much more. We never leave home without it. And for the vast majority of us, it's never more than an arm's length away. And iPhone is, iPhone is continuing to transform even more parts of our lives. CarPlay is changing the way that we use iPhone in our car. And I'm pleased to announce today that now every major car brand has committed to delivering CarPlay. And there will be more than 40 new models of cars shipping by the end of this year. This is only a year after we announced CarPlay. It's unbelievable momentum. HomeKit is changing the way we control our devices at home. And we're working with the leading automation companies, many of which announced that their products will support, help, uh, will support HomeKit at CES, and even more will roll out through the year. Now, perhaps the most profound change and positive impact that iPhone will make is on our health. There are already over 900 incredible apps that help you manage and track your health and fitness. But we have always wanted to make the biggest difference we could make. And as we worked, on HealthKit, we came across an even broader impact that iPhone could make. And that is on medical research. And to tell you all about this, I'd like to invite Jeff Williams up. Jeff? Thanks, Tim. I know medical research is not what you were expecting, but uh, let me explain. When we were working on Health Kit, we talked to a lot of medical experts, and the conversation often turned to research and some of the challenges they face uh, in a process that really hasn't changed in decades, and we thought we could help. One of the biggest challenges researchers have is recruiting. They often have to pay people to participate, which by the way, doesn't give you the best cross section of the population. But the bigger issue is small sample sizes, sometimes 50 to 100 people, which limits our understanding of diseases. Another issue is subjective data. The most common way to assess Parkinson's is to have a patient walk in front of a physician and the physician rates them on a scale of zero to four. You know, I think that's a two. 
Yet another issue is the frequency of data. Researchers often get snapshots of data through time, like that quarterly trip to the doctor's office. But we all know that the reality is disease symptoms ebb and flow daily and sometimes hourly. But perhaps the most significant challenge is the communication flow. When you participate in a study, you often don't hear back until the very end of the study, if at all. We looked at these problems and we saw an opportunity to help. There are hundreds of millions of iPhone users out there, many of whom would gladly contribute if it were just easier to do so. So today, we're proud to announce Research Kit. Research Kit is a software framework made specifically for medical research. It lets researchers easily create apps, and it turns iPhone and Health Kit into powerful diagnostic tools. Now, we didn't build it on our own. We've been working with experts from these institutions for the past year, and together we've built the first five apps, each targeted at some of the world's most serious diseases. Let me give you an example. Parkinson's. We worked with the University of Rochester, Chinua Hospital, and Sage Bionetworks to create Empower. Now, anyone with an iPhone can contribute to Parkinson's research. It's easy to sign up. You just do it right on the phone. And the app turns iPhone into a diagnostic tool. Let me give you an example. There's a quick tapping test that evaluates hand tremors. Or you can say ah into the microphone and the processor will detect minute vocal cord variations that assesses the level of Parkinson's. And remember that walk test? Now all you have to do is stick your iPhone in your pocket walk out 20 steps and back, and the accelerometer and gyroscope precisely measure gait. And you can do that anywhere, not just in the doctor's office. <laughs> the app also pulls data from health kit, like your activity data, from your Apple Watch, from your iPhone, or other devices. Researchers believe that exercise can affect the symptoms of Parkinson's, but some believe that exercise may actually slow or even halt the progression of Parkinson's, and now researchers get a chance to look at that data. But here's the best part. The user sees this right on his or her phone, empowering them to understand and possibly influence their health long before a research study is concluded. So that's just Parkinson's. Uh, for diabetes, we worked with Mass General on an app that looks at behavior and glucose levels. For cardiovascular disease, we've worked with Stanford Medicine and the University of Oxford on an app that looks at heart health. For asthma, We've worked with Mount Sinai on an app that, the purpose of this is to see if a mobile app can help a patient manage their asthma. Uh, now, now this one's available throughout the US, but, but they're doing something really neat in New York City in phase two. Mount Sinai is giving away some spirometers and Bluetooth inhalers for data accuracy. And then they've teamed up with Cornell Medical College and they're actually swabbing city surfaces throughout New York City to look for pathogens. And then the iPhone, the GPS coordinates from the iPhone, will compare to exacerbations from the, the spirometer data and then map that to the pathogen map and try to tie all of that together to understand what the triggers are for asthma. That's just cool. <laughs> Thank you.
And for breast cancer, there's, there's been amazing progress in the treatment of breast cancer over the past couple of decades. And as a result, there are more and more survivors who often suffer with symptoms post-treatment that are not well understood. So this app is targeted at all of those brave women hoping to help them live a better day. Now, let's talk about something really, really important. There is nothing more sensitive than your medical data. You decide what apps you participate in, what research you participate in. You decide how your data is shared, and Apple will not see your data. We're, we're really excited about ResearchKit, but we thought it'd be great if you heard from the people who've been working with it. I've spent a large part of my career focused on a number of different uh, diseases, from obesity, diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's, and one of the problems has really been around our ability to understand what's actually going on in those diseases. The key to understanding health and disease is research and data. What all researchers want is measured, quantitative, objective data. Well, up until now, when somebody wanted to do a research study, they might, uh, you know, put up a bunch of flyers around and hope somebody comes along and tears up the phone number. Methods for conducting medical research haven't really changed in decades. We have sent out over 60,000 letters. Those 60,000 letters have netted 305 women. We really do need to transform how we do research. And the iPhone, with an ability to collect data, could be a powerful tool for research. Research Kit is a framework. It's a framework that enables medical researchers to more easily design the apps that they're going to use for clinical studies. We're talking about trying to change the scale of the amount of data that we can collect. Going from data that might be collected, say, once every three months, to data that's collected, say, once every second. The iPhone's being carried now by millions of people all over the world. So to think that this device that you use to check your mail or Facebook can be used to battle disease is really simply amazing. The concept that I could kick out a survey to patients every day, every week, that would show up on their phone and would actually improve their health and our ability to care for them, that's a game changer. That is awesome. We can now engage unprecedented numbers of individuals in large geographic areas, many of which have never been able to participate in research. Half of the Parkinson patient in the world is in China. China has the largest number of mobile phone users, which means that we can collect more information so that can give us more accurate estimate on things for the research purpose. What we're building into this platform are simple structured tests that people can go through, things like tapping or a voice test. And this can all be done using the built-in sensors on the device and a little bit of code. One of the things that Research Kit will do is put people at the center of research, giving people the insights and the tools they need to live better and healthier lives. It's going to change research for every condition that's out there and that just makes it very accessible to patients. The easier you can make it for people to participate, the better off you're going to be. I want to leave a legacy for my granddaughter. Maybe when she's 25, they'll come up with, oh wow, that research study that was done in 2015, you know, with the iPhone was really key in making a breakthrough on how we can better help asthmatics. You know, she'll say, wow, my grandma was a part of that. Putting the solutions in the hands, literally the hand with an iPhone of the patient, this is the answer. This is exactly where medicine is going. It has to. It has to.
we're going we're gonna to add the research kit over time, um, but we wanted anybody, anywhere, regardless of the platform they're on, to contribute. So we're actually going to make this open source. <laughs> We're releasing Research Kit next month, and the first five apps that you saw are going to be available today. <laughs> Apple has always believed that amazing things can happen when you put technology in the hands of the many. There's a, there's a brilliant and motivated research community out there, and we can't wait to see what they do with it. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Brilliant. The iPhone continues to change so many things in our lives, and we're incredibly confident that research is going to transform medical research in a way that's truly profound, and we are so proud to be a part of it. Next up, I'd like to talk about the Mac. <laughs> this is the strongest Mac lineup we ever have had. We continue to innovate, we continue to lead the industry, and more importantly, we continue to provide the very best experience for our customers. And this is the reason that for every year, for the last decade, the Mac has outgrown the industry. And if you look at notebooks, the numbers are even more telling. Last year, the industry shrank, and the Mac grew over 20%. This is phenomenal. And if, when you're out in the wild, you will see Macs everywhere now. They're in schools, they're in businesses, they're in coffee shops and airports, and hopefully they're in your living room. But the definition of portability has changed in the last several years, led by iPhone and iPad. So we challenged ourselves to take everything that we had learned in designing iPhone and iPad and do something incredibly ambitious and bold. We challenged ourselves to reinvent the notebook. And we did it. <laughs> and here it is. You gotta know I'm feeling love. Mm. You gotta know I'm feeling love. You gotta know I'm feeling love. Made it go. I'll never love her. Another one, another you. It's gotta be love. I said it. Unbelievable. Can you even see it? I can't even feel it. There it goes. I'd like I'd like to invite Phil Schiller up to tell you all about it. Phil? Thank you, Tim. Oh, good morning, everyone. 
I'm so excited to tell you all about this incredible new MacBook. It is the most extreme and efficient notebook we have ever created. And it took reinventing every technology in it to deliver something this amazing. And it absolutely looks gorgeous from every angle. The new MacBook weighs just two pounds. Yes. This is the lightest Mac we have ever made. And even at its thickest point, it's just 13.1 millimeters thin. That's the thinnest Mac we have ever made as well. In fact, the previous thinnest Mac, here it is, the 11-inch MacBook Air, as you can see, the new MacBook is 24% thinner. That is a huge difference. And as you look around at every angle, you see, well, this is an all-metal enclosure. The team has integrated the antennas right into the enclosure. It's the first time we've been able to do it that way. And when you open it up, you're struck by one of its most dominant features, that keyboard. It has a full-size keyboard. It goes all the way to the edge. That actually defines the size of the notebook, that keyboard. And it's not just any keyboard. It is an all-new keyboard. As you move to a thinner design, it took an entirely new kind of invention to make it a beautiful keyboard. So the team studied how current keyboard technology works. Here's a slow motion video of a customer typing on a standard keyboard. And as you see, as the keys get pressed, they're a bit wobbly. In fact, if you press them on the side, they start to bottom out. That's because they're based on a mechanism called a scissor mechanism. And there was a time when that was great. But now there's something new. Our team invented a butterfly mechanism. This butterfly mechanism is built of a single assembly. And it's supported by a stainless steel dome switch. And that all adds up to a key that is much more precise and accurate. In fact, it's four times more stable than that scissor mechanism. Yet it is 40% thinner, allowing us to make a thinner keyboard. And we also made the keycap larger, making it even easier to strike and get a beautiful typing experience. So this is a slow motion video of typing on the new keyboard, on the new MacBook. The keys are much more precise, much more accurate, even if you strike them on the side. It is a beautiful keyboard, even in the dark. <laughs> we have now created a new lighting system for the backlight with an individual LED for each key. This allows it to be thinner and more precise in its illumination. So that's the first new feature on the new MacBook, an all-new full-size keyboard. Well, the perfect size display to match to that full-size keyboard is a 12-inch display with full edge-to-edge -edge cover glass. And to be beautiful, of course, it's a retina display. A retina display with 2304 by 1440 pixels. If you do the math, that's just over 3.3 million pixels. It is a beautiful display. The panel is just 0.88 millimeters thin. This is the thinnest display we've ever built into a Mac. And those pixels have a larger aperture for light. What's that about? Well, an individual pixel is made up of red, green, and blue subpixels. The team has been able to miniaturize electronics and move them out of the way so more light comes through each pixel. So at the same level of brightness, it actually consumes 30% less energy. Such so our thinnest display, our most energy efficient display. It truly is the best display we've ever built onto a Mac. <laughs> Next up, the trackpad. This is an incredible feat of engineering. A traditional trackpad is hinged at the top. And as you click on it, it moves like a diving board. So the top end is stiffer and the bottom end is softer. Well, not with this trackpad. We call it the Force Touch Trackpad. It has a glass multi-touch surface, but built underneath it are four force sensors. And for the first time in a trackpad, our Taptic engine that you've heard about with Watch is built into here as well to provide feedback of your clicking. This is an incredibly thin, capable trackpad 
and for the first time, you can cook anywhere and get the exact same feel over the entire surface. It's not hinged like a diving board. And that feel, because it's managed in software, you can adjust it if you want to have a stiffer or softer feel to your track path. But what it can do is so much more than that. Those four sensors sense a range of pressure from your lightest click to a deeper press. And we've created a new gesture for those deeper presses. We call them a force click. So how does that work? Well, in OS 10, when you force click, for example, on a word in a browser, you automatically get a Wikipedia lookup of that. If you're an email and you see an address, you force click on it, and you automatically get a map that pops up with a location. Maybe someone has invited you and sent you a date and time. You force click on that and it automatically creates a calendar entry. You can even force click on a file in the finder and automatically get a preview of the contents of that file without even opening the application. And this is a range of pressure that this, the sensors can sense. So in drawing applications or signing your signature, you get a much more accurate illustration based on that pressure. If you're watching a movie in QuickTime or a video, you can press deeper on fast forward, and the deeper you press, the faster it goes. I got that in just two takes. So this is the, more, the, new, the new trackpad and the new MacBook. It's engineered like no trackpad ever has before. So let's take a look inside, because what's on the inside is just as innovative as these features we're looking at on the outside. This is our latest unibody architecture. The unibody architecture creates the structure out of the enclosure, and you can mount devices and components directly to that structure, like that great trackpad. Let's put the logic board inside it. This is the logic board of the 11-inch MacBook Air. Obviously, it was quite an engineering feat to make that fit inside the new MacBook. Well, our engineering team took on two really huge challenges with this. The first, the device with the circular shape on the right, well, that's a fan with vent support. Well, the team designed this new MacBook with removing all fans and vents to make it the first fanless MacBook ever. Yes. So it operates silently. So here's that logic board now without the fan. What our engineering team did is remarkable. That's the new logic board inside the MacBook. They've miniaturized it. It is the densest logic board ever in a Mac. It is 67% smaller. That is one-third the size of the previous smallest logic board. This is insane. <laughs> it's powered by an Intel Core M, fifth generation, 14 nanometer process. You can configure it with speeds up to 1.3 gigahertz, which can be turbocharged running up to 2.9 gigahertz. And yet, all that performance just consumes five watts. It's incredibly energy efficient. So now we can fit that incredible minute logic board right inside the new MacBook. So what do we do with the rest of that space? <laughs> we fill it with batteries. <laughs> this uses Apple's asymmetric battery technology. You can see the cells are different sizes. But the team went so much further with the battery chemistry in this new MacBook. Traditional cells are rectangular, not only in the X and Y, but in the Z thickness as well. Well, that doesn't work very well if you have a product this thin, this contoured. If you try to fit a rectangular cell in it, you see you're left with a lot of empty space. We don't want to ship air, we want to ship batteries. So what the team has done is amazing. They've created the batteries in sheets that can be terraced with contoured shapes that fit the contours of the MacBook's enclosure. So now you can fit battery technology inside it like this. It's far more efficient. In fact, we can get 35% more battery within the same space by these new contoured cells. And that allows us to deliver all-day battery life in the new MacBook. So that's up to nine hours wireless web, up to 10 hours iTunes movie playback, and so much more. It is an incredibly innovative notebook on the inside as well as the outside. Now, how do you connect with the world? Well, this is our vision for the future of the notebook. 
And the only intelligent vision of the future of the notebook is one without wires. We don't have to plug up cables to connect to things. That's why we have both dual stream, 802.11 and AC, and Bluetooth 4.0 built in. With all the great new advancements in OS X Yosemite and continuity, you can connect and share like never before wirelessly. You can connect peripherals. You can connect to printers. You can share content. Because this is the vision for the future of the notebook, one of extreme portability. When you want to watch content on your TV, you do it with AirPlay. When you want to share files, you do it with AirDrop. When you want to get on a cellular network, from your MacBook, you can initiate a hotspot on your iPhone. When you want to kick back and listen to music, you can do it wirelessly with some very cool beat speakers and headphones. <laughs> now, of course, there is a time when it's really convenient to plug in a cable. That's when you want to, want to charge quickly. So we do have a port on here for power. And the team decided, if we're going to have a port on it, let's make the most versatile connector we've ever put in a notebook. And sure enough, they did. One connector supports USB data, display port, power, HDMI, VGA, all through one connector. <laughs> the technology behind this is a brand new standard called USB-C, and Apple, along with a number of other companies, have all worked together to create this new industry standard, and you're going to see it appear in more products. The first you see it here on the new MacBook. Here's the cable for USB-C. It's a third the size of a standard USB cable. It's easier to use because it's reversible. No more trying to dive underneath and figure out which way it goes. And it's the most versatile connector. You'll see adapters from Apple, as well as many third parties to support all these different interfaces all through one connector. So this is the new MacBook with its incredible keyboard, with its butterfly mechanism, it's a new multi-touch trackpad that's force-sensitive, a perfectly matched 12-inch retina display with over 3.3 million pixels, our most dense logic board ever, incredible new contoured battery technology, all packed into the thinnest, lightest, most beautiful notebook we have ever made. It comes in silver, space gray, and a stunning gold. Yes. <laughs> We're really proud of the fact that this is the most environmentally friendly notebook we've ever made. Energy Star 6.1, EP Gold, arsenic-free display glass, mercury-free, BFR-free, PVC-free, the first time on a Mac, beryllium-free, and of course, highly recyclable. And I think the team is probably proudest of this next one. It's also the world's most energy-efficient notebook. We really love and couldn't be proud of this new MacBook. And I have a brief video to tell you more about it. The new MacBook is the result of a collective obsession to simplify its essential components to create the most efficient design possible. It's a product that couldn't exist without invention across many disciplines. A full-size keyboard is the most familiar, comfortable, and accurate typing platform. It defined the width of the new MacBook. To make it thinner and more precise, we created a sturdy, single-assembly butterfly mechanism. Combined with a new stainless steel dome switch, this reinforces the keyboard's balance and stability. Each individual key is now lit by a single LED. This enables better, more deliberate illumination. A retina display delivers the very best viewing experience. To engineer the thinnest retina screen for a Mac, we've refined every component, from the glass down to the pixels. It delivers the vivid brightness and performance you'd expect, but in a design that's thinner, lighter, and 30% more power efficient. We've designed a force-sensing, multi-touch trackpad. 
This adds a new dimension of interaction. Touch sensors make the entire glass surface active. Force sensors measure a wide range of pressure, from the lightest tap to the deepest press. The pressure you apply activates an electromagnet that responds with tactile feedback. So now instead of just seeing what's happening on the screen, you feel it too. To make all-day battery life possible, we have developed new battery technologies. We actually change the construction and internal chemistry of the cells, which are now manufactured in discrete sheets. These sheets are stacked in a terraced structure that was developed along with the external enclosure. The design allows for 35% greater battery capacity in this compact space. To maximize performance, we took an extreme approach to miniaturization. Components were optimized and engineered to fit together to create the highest density Mac logic board yet. It's actually two thirds smaller than any we've designed before. A fundamental goal was to eliminate the need for vents, fans, or any moving parts, allowing it to operate in silence. By consolidating the antenna with the bottom case, we were able to design an integrated aluminium hinge. This innovation, along with its unibody enclosure, makes this the first all-metal MacBook. This product is not only thin and light, its advanced wireless technologies make it truly portable. When you actually need to plug in, the new USB Type-C connector is a single port for charging, video output and data transfer. The result of all of this is a product that's only 13.1 millimeters thick and weighs just two pounds. To create the new MacBook, we were uncompromising in its design and engineering. We set a new standard for portability while enhancing its fundamental components to deliver what we believe is the best MacBook yet. Hashtag MacBook lust. The new MacBook starts with 12.1 inch retina display, a 1.1 gigahertz Intel Core M, a large eight gigs of internal memory, and a large 256 gigabyte flash storage device at just $12.99. Yes. And for those, yep, and for those who want even more, you can get a faster processor and twice that internal storage for just $15.99. It is absolutely incredible, beautiful, and in our most advanced notebook ever. It will begin to ship in a number of countries in just a month, April 10th. And the new MacBook joins the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro to make this our best notebook lineup ever. Now we have some updates to the others as well. The MacBook Air is being updated to faster fifth gen Intel Core i5 and i7 processors. They have faster Thunderbolt connectors, Thunderbolt 2, and the 13-inch configuration gets flash that's now twice as fast as before, and those will be shipping starting today. And the 13-inch MacBook Pro has an update as well. It's getting the new Force Touch trackpad that we just talked about with MacBook, also in the 13-inch MacBook Pro. It's getting faster processors with faster core i5 and i7 processors, and it's getting twice as fast flash as well, and we've been able to get another hour of battery life out of it, now 10 hours of all-day battery life. <laughs> and that's shipping today as well. And that is our news on the MacBook. Tim? Thanks, Phil. It's really awesome. I think you're really gonna love it. Now I'd like to turn to the newest addition to the Apple family. 
And of course, I'm talking about the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch is the most personal device we have ever created. It's not just with you, it's on you. And since what you wear is an expression of who you are, we designed Apple Watch to appeal to a whole variety of people with different tastes and different preferences. But the one thing is consistent, we crafted each one of them with the care you would expect from Apple and used incredibly beautiful materials like this stainless steel and sapphire crystal. Anodized aluminum and a jaw-dropping, beautiful 18-karat gold. Now, in addition to being a beautiful object, the Apple Watch is the most advanced timepiece ever created. It's a revolutionary new way to connect with others. And it's a comprehensive health and fitness companion. So let's start with time. Apple Watch is incredibly accurate. It's accurate within 50 milliseconds of the UTC. That's the uni universal time standard, for those of you that don't know. That means it's super accurate and you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> now, in addition to this, every Apple Watch has many different faces and many different configurations. So you might like this traditional face. It's absolutely gorgeous. Or you might like one that's available in a variety of different colors. Or a digital face that's full of rich detail. Or one that is simple and elegant. You also might like one that expresses time in a way that's never been done before. Or one that is just fun. <laughs> and it will bring a smile to your face every time you look at it. We all need that. But this is just the beginning. Because the fact is, you can add many details to the face that you choose. You can add things like the date. You can add the world clock. You can add a stopwatch. You can even add your next meeting and plenty more. Now, Apple Watch also has a new feature that's called glances. And glances allows you to check things very quickly for those things you check most frequently. So if you swipe up from the bottom of the watch face, you can see things like weather, your calendar. Glances allows you to control your music. And you can even check your heart rate. And this is clearly not mine at this point in time. <laughs> now, as you see, Apple Watch brings a whole new personal dimension from timekeeping that's never been done before. Now, Apple Watch also allows you to communicate immediately and much more intimately than ever before. And so right from your wrist, you can receive messages. And the Taptic Engine alerts you by tapping your wrist so that you can read and respond to that message instantly if you want. You can also, with the built-in speaker and microphone, you can receive calls on your watch. I have been wanting to do this since I was five years old. And the day is finally here. And if you're an email junkie, you can read full emails. You can mark them unread, you can flag them, or you can delete them and get rid of them. But there's also some all new ways to communicate with Apple Watch that have never been done before. For example, if you press the side button, you can bring up your friends. And you can connect 
Apple Watch to Apple Watch with a new technology called Digital Touch. Digital Touch allows you to do things like sketch on your watch, and that sketch will be animated on your friend's watch exactly as you drew it. You can also tap your watch to get your friend's attention. And you can even send your heartbeat. This is an incredibly intimate way to tell someone you're thinking about them. I'm hoping someone sends me one of those. <laughs> I think you're going to have a blast with these new digital touch features, a whole new way to communicate. Now, Apple Watch is also a comprehensive health and fitness companion. You know, we make products that enhance people's lives, and the Apple Watch carries that to a new level. We want people to be healthier by being more active. And so the Apple Watch tracks your daily movement, it tracks how long you're exercising or getting brisk activity, and it even reminds you if you've been sitting too long, which is about now, probably, <laughs> if you're wearing one. And it's, it all comes together in this elegant, simple three-ring graphic. You can immediately see all of those dimensions at once. Now, the Apple Watch will also send you reminders, as a friend would, to remind you to be more active. And in fact, at the end of the week, on a Monday, it will send you a report of how you did the previous week. And it will even suggest a new move target for you for the coming week ahead. It's like having a coach on your wrist. Now, Apple Watch also has a new workout app. And this new workout app allows you to do things like running and cycling. Or you can pretty much do any, any machine that's in your gym today. And it will provide detailed metrics about your workout that you can see during your workout, things like how many calories you're burning, the distance you're traveling, the time. All of these things are very easily tracked while, while you're using the watch. And so that is a brief summary of health and fitness on the Apple Watch. But we thought to bring these capabilities to life, we would give an Apple Watch to a friend of ours. And we did that. You may know her as one of the world's top fashion models. She's also a member of the Time Magazine top 100 most influential people in the world. She's a mother and a maternal health advocate. She's a member of the Harvard Medical School Global Health Council and an advisor to the Harvard School of Public Health. She also founded Every Mother Counts, which is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to safe pregnancy and childbearing for every mother. She is incredibly impressive. And she is Christy Turlington Burns. Now, Christy also in her spare time has finished three marathons, which is, I have to say, three more than I have. And she recently became the first person in the world to finish a half marathon using an Apple Watch. And we were able to video some of her experiences in Africa while she was running the marathon, and I'd like to show it to you now. Health and fitness have always been part of my life. As a kid, as an adult, and now, as a mother. Maternal health is the most important issue to me. It's a big part of why I run. I came to Kilimanjaro for the half marathon. The length of this race is similar to the distance that mothers in developing countries like Tanzania need to travel to get basic obstetric care. I founded Every Mother Counts for them. They are my motivation. 
I've just started using Apple Watch, and that's what it is. Motivation. Not just for training, but for everyday things. During the race, I relied on the workout app. It tracked my time, measured my distance, and pushed my pace. In the short time I've been using it, I can already see how this is going to be an important part of my life. In eight weeks, I'm running my next race. An Apple Watch will be with me every step of the way. And I'll continue to raise even more awareness about maternal health worldwide. It's going to be hard. But like most challenges, it will definitely be worth it. Now, Christy just arrived back in the US from Africa yesterday afternoon, but despite that, she graciously accepted our invitation to be here with us this morning, and I'd like to invite her on stage to talk about her next big adventure. Christy? Christy, we're incredibly inspired by what you're doing. We have always been about trying to, you know, make a difference in the world, and you are clearly doing that. Thank you so much, Tim. It's such an honor to be here. Tanzania was an incredible experience and such an amazing opportunity to raise awareness for everyone that counts. Now, how did the Apple Watch help you run this half marathon, just in case I eventually wind up running one? <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, well, I relied on it quite heavily, actually. Uh, the race was pretty challenging, and there was a lot of, alt of elevation and altitude, so I was checking quite frequently. You look uh, like you further. were booking, though, I have to say. <laughs> I saved some energy for the end. <laughs> now, you're wearing, it looks like, the blue modern buckle. Is, yes. this a, is this a favorite? This is my fashion favorite, I have to say. <laughs> I've been using the rubber band mostly for my training and my yep. racing. Oh, yes. There. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is my chic one. <laughs> well, you've got some uh, a big adventure coming up. You want to tell us about it? Yes. In uh, about eight weeks, I'm going to be running my first race, well, my, my London Virgin Money Marathon in the UK. It's like the biggest marathon, and I'm hoping to beat my record and come in just under four hours. And the wow. Apple Watch is going to help me get there. Wow. This is great. Let's see. That will now be four to zero. <laughs> four marathons for you and zero for me. Well, look, we are very happy to be a part of it. We want the Apple to watch to, to help you prepare for this marathon. Thank you so much for coming this morning. It's, a, it's a privilege for us to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Starting today, you can follow Christy's training. She's going to be doing a weekly blog, and it's on apple.com. And so all of you people like me that are wondering what it takes to prepare, check this blog out. Now, so Apple Watch can be an incredibly rich and integral part of your life. It's a precise and customizable timepiece it's a revolutionary new way to connect with others, and it's a comprehensive health and fitness companion. But that is really just the beginning, because you will also learn that you can pay with Apple Pay using your Apple Watch. You can view your photos. You can control your music. And you can interface with Apple Watch with Siri just using your voice. And one of my favorites, you can get notifications on Apple Watch. You can receive any notification that you receive on iPhone today, you can receive on your watch. So you can keep track of your favorite sports teams. 
There's a few Duke fans here, including one on stage. You can connect to social media. And you can keep track of the daily news right at the moment it happens. Because now it's on your wrist, not in your pocket or your pocketbook. Now, we released the Watch SDK, or the, the Watch Kit SDK in November. And since then, developers have been creating thousands of new apps. And some are pretty phenomenal. We wanted to show you a few of those this morning. And to do that, I'd like to invite Kevin Lynch up. Kevin? Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I'm really excited to show you Apple Watch in action. And using Apple Watch during the day is really about brief interactions. Many of these are just a few seconds long. So to give you a sense of what it's like to use these apps on the watch, we're going to use some moments in time, kind of like a day in the life of Apple Watch, if you will. So let's start out at work. So here I am at work, and I like to be able to look at my watch without pulling my phone out all the time. And I can see um, important notifications, messages from VIPs, quick looks at information with glances. Some glances I might look at here, for example, I can just swipe up from the bottom. I can see the current stock market. I can see some business information using Salesforce Wave here. I can look at sports scores using MLB.com's at bat glance. And I can see um, the top trend on Twitter, which is, uh, I guess, this event right now, which is great. <laughs> uh, and then uh, this is the American Airlines glance, so I can look at upcoming trips. So for example, I might be going to New York pretty soon, and I can see my departure information here. Now that actually reminds me, I've got some questions about New York, so I'm going to ask Siri here. I'll just start Siri by pressing the crown. What's the temperature in New York? Oh, it's getting warmer there. Now, I've, um, I can also interact with Siri just using my voice like this. Hey Siri, how about the rest of the week? Oh, it looks like I've got a good forecast here. Um, it's pretty cloudy, though, so I'm going to remind myself to bring an umbrella. I'll, I'll use Siri for that, too. Hey, Siri, remind me to pack my umbrella when I get home. Great, it's creating a little reminder for me. I can see that, so when I get home, I will remember to pack the right thing. It's great to use Siri to make yourself uh, remember things throughout the day like that. Oh, I see I've got a message coming in. I get messages with a variety of apps. This one is from WeChat. It's a friend of mine from China. I'm going to be meeting for dinner. It uh, looks like he's picked a place, Fig and Olive. I can reply just by tapping on a button on the notification. It opens the WeChat app on my watch. And there's the thread. I can reply with a text message. Or WeChat has these great stickers. So I'm going to tap here to pick a sticker. They've got a bunch of collections here. I like these. They're called Chewy Hams. And um, they're pretty cool. Very emotive, as you can see. Um, I think I will go with this one right here. So it's going to stick that right in the reply. I think that will uh, get the message across. Now, when I'm uh, at work, I tend to sit a lot while I'm working or in meetings. And sometimes I forget to stand up. And Apple Watch will help me do that. Uh, you get a notification much like this one. Uh, you can turn these off if you like. But uh, I have them on, so I remember. And if you already get up and stand, of course, it won't let you know. It knows that you did. So that's a really great way to interact with the watch while you're at work. Now, if you go to lunch or want to pick up dinner on the way home, you might go to Whole Foods. Well, you can use Apple Watch to actually pay for things while you're checking out. I've got my credit cards right inside my watch. To bring one up, all I have to do is double tap the side button, and it brings up my credit card. And then I just put my watch near the merchant terminal, and I've paid. That's it. I'm done. It's super simple to pay with Apple Watch. Now, since we're not actually at Whole Foods right now, I have a merchant terminal right here. This is a little handheld one. So when you put your watch next to the scanner, it'll do this. That's it. You're done. Super easy to use Apple Watch. And you don't have to. It's a lot of fun to use. And you don't have to bring the, the watch face and touch the merchant terminal. As soon as you get close to it, you'll get the audible noise that you heard. And you also get haptic feedback on your wrist so you know the transaction was done. Super, super easy to do. Now, when I'm going home, I might want to um, put my phone down, and I like to be able to walk around my house, and I can still stay in touch with my Apple Watch, and I don't have to have my phone with me all the time. I also like to change my watch face, and I can do that by just force pressing on the screen here, 
and swipe over to another one. I like to use the Mickey face, so I'll select that one. There we go, that's a lot of fun. Now I can get notifications, of course, while I'm at home, uh, or incoming photos from my friends, or if I like, I can just glance at that as well. I can just swipe up here, and in just a second, I can see some images, recent photos from my friends on Instagram. And if I'd like to see a little bit more, I can tap on that glance. It takes me to the Instagram app on my Apple Watch, and here I can see some photos, some really beautiful photos right on the watch face here. And I can use the crown to quickly scroll through them to see one that I might like. Uh, here's a nice forest photo. If I tap on that, I can see more information. This one's about Muir Woods. You can see 54 people have liked it. I'll like it too, I just tap on the heart there, and now I've, I've liked that photo. So it's a lot of fun to use apps like Instagram right in your watch, super easy and, and quick. Now, um, earlier today, I left my dog uh, for a haircut, and I'm expecting to get a call to see when he's ready. I don't wanna miss that call, of course. Um, so here, here comes a phone call right now. Um, bow wow meow, now I can answer this on my watch, or I can send a message in reply, or answer on my iPhone if I like. I'm going to answer right on my Apple Watch. Hi, this is Kevin. Hi Kevin, this is Vera calling from Bow Wow Meow. Your dog Finnegan is ready to be picked up. Okay, great, I'll be right over as soon as the uh, event is done, okay? <laughs> okay, see you soon. Okay, Bye. thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Really easy to take those calls wherever you are. And the great thing is that Apple Watch communicates with your iPhone over Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth. So when you're home, you don't have to be within Bluetooth range of your phone. You can be anywhere in your house and still get all your messages and take your phone calls just like that. Super cool. Now, if I was going to go to the airport, I might want to call a car. So let's look at doing that with Uber. So I just press the crown to go to my home screen, and over here I have an Uber app. And it will uh, show me I've got a car within two minutes. I'll press request and it's going to actually summon a car right here from my watch, the corner of 20th and Dolores here in San Francisco. Looks like there's one right around the corner. Um, my driver's name is Scott. He's pretty close, so I think we're gonna get a notification uh, in a second here about him arriving. There it is. So you just get the notification on your wrist, it taps you, let you know the car's coming, and the notification has the license plate number, a photo of the car, so you know you're getting in the right car uh, when he arrives. So a lot of fun to be able to call a car like that. Now what I also like is when I'm traveling to an airport, I can use my Apple Watch to get through security. So when I get near the airport, my boarding pass will just show up right here in my notifications. There's one from American. If I tap on it, you can see my flight information, my seat number, everything you need to check in, including a barcode that I can use to just wave in front of the scanner and get through security. And that's really great, because it's one less thing to hold on to, you know, when you're trying to get through the airport. Now, when I'm leaving, I also like to send my wife a, a little goodbye note. So I'm going to do that with Digital Touch. So I'll just press the side button here, and it brings up my friends. I can use the crown here to select uh, somebody to send a note to. Here's my wife. Now I can call her, send a message, or I can use Digital Touch. I'm going to draw a little photo, a picture for her. So I'll pick a nice color, and I'm gonna draw a nice little flower. So that way she knows I'm thinking of her as I'm flying. All right, so that's sent off to my wife now. Now when I arrive at my hotel room, I'll also get a notification when I get near hotels, like SPG's W Hotel. And here's my reservation information for the hotel room right here. So you can see it's got all the information I need to check in, my confirmation number, my room number. Uh, and you can see these are really rich notifications. They have images, they have great typography and rich layout, and this not only looks great and reflect, reflects the brand of a company, but it also makes it easier for you to understand very quickly, and you can act on these. In this case, I can use this to unlock my door, right from the notification on my watch. So I press unlock your door, and I can bypass the front desk entirely, go directly to my room, and then my watch is my room key. I just wave it in front of the door, and I go into my room. Isn't that cool? Now when I go into my room, uh, sometimes you know they have music playing when you walk into a hotel room. So this one has some music playing and I'm wondering what this song is. So I'm going to find out using my watch and Shazam on my watch.
that cool? So it's a simple press of the Shazam button. I see the song, the album art, I can see the lyrics. The lyrics are in sync with the song that's being played right now. Really super cool and super easy to do. Um, now when I'm traveling, I might receive some messages as well. And here's one coming in uh, from Maddie saying that uh, ah, she's forgot her key and can't get in the house. Now I can actually take care of this for my watch. I'm gonna reply and say it's going to be okay. I'll use dictation to do that. It's okay, I'll open the garage door for you. I can send that back to Maddie. Now I can send that as an audio of my voice actually speaking or I can send it back as the text. I'll send the text. So that's gone off to Maddie now. And now I can actually control the garage door remotely with my watch. I've got this great app from alarm.com and my garage door is hooked up there. You can see I've got my information about my house, the locks are locked, the garage door is closed right now. If I'd like to change this, I can just tap on the garage area here. And I, actually, I have a camera as well pointed at the garage door. And I'm seeing a live feed of the garage door here right now with an open button. So let's open the door for Maddie. So open the door, it's gonna send the command to my garage door and it should open. There it goes. <laughs> live feed. It looks like Maddie has a friend with her right now and she's able to get inside, that's great. So these are just a few examples of the great apps being made for Apple Watch and a really big focus of our time here has been on saving you time in these moments in your life when you're using the watch and make it really delightful. And we're super excited to see what developers are gonna do with this great new platform. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. I think you're gonna be surprised at all the things that developers can do here. When you unleash that community, it will be incredible. Now, so how do you get this? First, Apple Watch has been designed to work with iPhone. So you go to the iPhone to both see apps, browse apps, and download apps. And there will be some great third-party apps as we talked about. In iOS 8.2, you will find this new app, the Apple Watch app. It looks like this. This is the App Store portion of it. This is where you see and browse and download apps. You can also uh, view how-to videos. You can even learn about the watch before you get one. You can also set up your friends and decide which notifications you want coming to your watch. Uh, iOS 8.2 is available today for download. Now with all of these great apps, and all the capabilities that we've shown you, we think that Apple Watch is quickly going to become integral to your day. And so we've designed it with all day battery life across a range of activities. During a typical day, you can expect 18 hours. So that works for most people, I think. And at the end of the day, there is a simple and elegant way to charge it that only Apple would come up with. If you hold the magnetic charger near the back of the watch, it will automatically click into place. It is so cool and so simple. Now we've curated Apple Watch into three collections. The first collection is the Apple Watch Sport. And it has anodized aluminum and it's available in silver, or space gray, and it has colorful bands that are made out of high performance floor elastomer. Now everything about Apple Watch has been very carefully considered, and down to the materials. And this aluminum material is not your usual run of the mill aluminum. And to show you what I mean, we prepared a short video. Aluminium is naturally strong and lightweight. It's the ideal material for Apple Watch Sport. Our engineers 
have custom designed a new alloy. It is 60% stronger than standard alloys, but just as light. This requires precision alloying. Raw aluminium of exceptional purity is first heated to a molten state. Tightly controlled amounts of magnesium and zinc are then added. As these elements bind together, they form a protective compound that strengthens the metal. The alloy is then poured, jet cooled and cast. A high temperature treatment minimizes uneven chemistry in the billets and ensures proper grain structure. Next, a finely tuned extrusion process creates a uniform surface free of defects. After being meticulously formed, each case is machined, buffed, and then textured with microscopic zirconia beads to achieve a consistent satin finish. Finally, anodizing creates a hard, clear outer layer that helps protect against stings and scratches. We believe this aluminium alloy sets a new standard, both in the way it performs and the way it looks. finish are absolutely fabulous. Now the Apple Watch Sport starts at only $349 for the 38 millimeter model and only $50 more for the 42 millimeter model. The Apple Watch collection offers the widest variety of bands that we offer. You can get a sport band. There are three different leather bands. There's a Melanie's loop and a link bracelet. The cases are made from stainless steel, and you can get them in either a traditional finish or this beautiful space black. And of course, this stainless steel is no ordinary stainless steel. <laughs> Stainless steel is both strong and beautiful. There's a reason it has long been used to make fine watch cases. For Apple Watch, we start with an alloy of stainless steel known for its strength and corrosion resistance. We then customize it through a series of alloying and processing steps to make it even stronger. While in its molten state, the composition of the metal is tightly controlled to minimize impurities and ensure hardness. This is followed by a specialized cold forging process that helps to make the metal up to 80% harder and less susceptible to nicks and scratches. The forgings are then machined in a 12-station, multi-axis milling machine, achieving highly accurate uniformity across the case. It's polished to a pristine mirror finish. For the space black stainless steel, an additional diamond-like carbon layer is added to achieve a durable finish and a brilliant appearance. The bands receive the same careful consideration. Each Lynx bracelet is made from more than 140 individual parts. The Melanais loop is made from fine steel coils woven together to create a flowing mesh with a fabric-like feel. With stainless steel, we've given a traditional material a new expression.
Now the Apple Watch collection also comes in two sizes. The 38 millimeter starts at only 549 and ranges to 1049 depending upon your selection of the watch band. The 42 millimeter is only $50 more. Now the Apple Watch Edition is something unbelievably unique and very special. They're also available in 38 millimeter and 42 millimeter sizes. Their cases are made from 18 karat solid gold. They also come with these beautiful custom design bands with details like elegant clasp and buckles that are also made of solid gold. Now there will be limited quantities of the Apple Watch Edition. It is priced from $10,000 and it will be available in select retail stores. The Apple Watch Edition is the most beautiful expression of the Apple Watch. You may be wondering when you can get these. We're taking pre-orders beginning on April the 10th. Also on April 10th, you can go look and experience an Apple Watch in person in one of our retail stores. And the retail team has worked out an incredible way to do this, and it starts with this beautiful custom table where you can see all of the Apple Watches beautifully displayed. And of course, our retail st staff is on hand to help you try them on to have the ultimate experience and help you choose the one that's right for you. The Apple Watch is available on April 24th, and it will be available in many countries throughout the world. Not all countries, however, and you can be assured that we're working as hard as possible, as fast as possible to deliver them to even more countries. We are incredibly excited about this new family of products for us, and we want the world to know that the Apple Watch is coming. And so we made an ad, and I'd love to play it for you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, the Apple Watch joins a line of products that we are incredibly proud of, but we continue to push all of them forward. This is what everyone in Apple is focused on, pushing all of our products forward and creating a better future, such as transforming the way we experience television with Apple TV and HBO Now, and this is just the beginning. The future of medical research, with the power of the iPhone and the new platform research kit, we're incredibly confident that this is gonna have a profound impact on all of us. The reinvention and future of the notebook with the all new MacBook. And of course, our newest, and our most personal device ever, the Apple Watch. We continue to innovate, we continue to push forward. All of our energy is on making the best products in the world 
that empower people, that enrich their lives. This is what Apple is all about, and this is what everyone in Apple is focused on. I'd like to personally thank all of the Apple team that made today possible. What you saw today is years of very hard work in the making. I'd like all of them to stand up for some level of recognition. Please. Johnny, you must stand up. Jeff, up. Thank you. Now, there are thousands more standing up in Cupertino and in many other places in the world. Uh, we have a hands-on area for all of you. I would encourage you to go get your hands on the new MacBook and look at all the watches. Try one on. It's just right outside. It's unbelievable. I want to thank you all for coming. It's a, it's a privilege to present in front of this group. Thank you.